Okay, here today we are looking at muscle fibers, growth and repair. Today's objective is uh, I can explain how muscles become larger with some resistance exercise. Um, so that's our target today. Uh, let's take a look at muscle growth. So starting out, each muscle fiber that you have in your body is formed during embryonic development. Okay. The way this works, you have something called a myoblast. Now you can probably figure this out, myoblast. We see the word myo, which means muscle, and blast. Blast meaning immature cells. So these are immature muscle cells. They all fuse together to form fibers. Okay. So the myoblasts are coming from the mesoderm. If you remember our three germ layers, the mesoderm gives rise to muscle. Our myoblasts fuse together to actually form our muscle fibers. So here's a nice little animation of how this kind of looks. You have a whole group of myoblasts. They fuse together down here to form a single muscle fiber. As you look at this picture, you might notice there are a lot of nuclei in that single muscle fiber. Here's another image to show you the same idea. We have these unfused myoblasts. They join forces and turn into one long muscle fiber. All right. Do you see something here called a satellite cell? We'll take a look at that in a second here. All right. So. Moving on, mature muscle fibers can have hundreds of nuclei. Okay, that's, that's a given because of the myoblasts that have fused together. Therefore, if you think about this, muscle fibers cannot undergo mitosis. Now, mitosis is needed for growth and repair, and today we're talking about muscle growth and repair. So do you think mitosis is going to have anything to do with it? Not really. So as a result, the number of skeletal muscle fibers is set before birth. Let's make sure we're understanding why they can't do mitosis. If I have hundreds of nuclei, hundreds of nuclei, instead of just having 46 chromosomes in a muscle fiber, I could have 46,000 muscle cells, I mean nuclei in a single muscle fiber. How do you do prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis if there's going to be 46,000 chromosomes switching places and crossing over? It doesn't work. You can't have that happen. So there is no mitosis in a muscle fiber. So that's kind of weird. So this little guy here, born, has just as many muscle fibers as he'll have when he's 30. Okay, Which means all of you guys were born with the set number of muscle fibers. Which makes you wonder, how do muscles get bigger? Obviously that little kid is not that ripped. Uh, obviously not as ripped as I am right now. Uh, so how did I get these giant guns? Um, so we take a look something called hypertrophy hypertrophy if we look at this word we know what hyper should mean in excess of something and you guys might remember this from our bone growth something called hypertrophic cartilage um, this is the idea of enlargement so it's the enlargement of existing muscle fibers by increasing the number of filaments remember that is our fifth and final layer of organization um, myofibrils was the organelle so basically imagine a muscle getting a whole lot more myofibrils inside of it, okay? A whole bunch more myofibrils. So you're going to be reading an article in class about uh, how these hormones affect this. So human growth hormone stimulates an increase. So if you do nothing at all, just sitting on the couch, just the fact that you hit puberty, you are now stronger than you were when you were 10. Okay, Most of us could probably whoop booty on our 10-year-old self. Um, another factor is testosterone. Pretty much, I'd put my money on any guy of the same age over a girl once you're in high school. However, a third grader, eh, the girl could be the, probably the bigger and stronger one on the playground. Um, so testosterone, as we've talked about it before, kind of an unfair advantage. But guys, because of testosterone, because of this androgen, um, we do that thing called anabolism, where it builds up proteins. Uh, guys get larger muscles, and then we see the bigger bones and larger features as a result. Okay, so those are two of the features. You'll read more details to get to understand this later here. All right. So how muscles get bigger? Growth is one issue. If you get bigger, what if you injure a muscle? If muscles can't do mitosis, how do they heal? How do you heal something like that? You've tore muscle. Well, you can't do mitosis, so the muscle can't divide and replace itself. Well, there's a little trick here. After embryonic development, some of those myoblasts that you saw, they remain unfused. Okay. So you can kind of see here's a little gap. There's a little gap right here in the muscle. 
Well, what we can have happen, these green, what we call satellite cells, I mentioned that a little bit earlier, they are unfused myoblasts. They can do mitosis still. They only have one nucleus. They only have 46 chromosomes. All right, so these unfused myoblasts are called satellite cells. They do cell division, and then you can see how this unfused myoblast can then fit in here. It fuses together and adds itself to the actual um, injured site, and you can aid in minor regeneration. Okay, so tears, this, this happens all the time. So it also is one way that our muscles are getting larger because that satellite cell is contributing its cytoplasm to the muscle fiber, so it makes a larger cell. Okay, and also adds its nucleus to the growing muscle fiber. All right, well, what about big damage? Serious muscle damage you cannot repair. It actually ends up in something called fibrosis. Okay, this is the replacement of muscle fibers with fibrous scar tissue. Now, this really just applies to the heart. Um, in a case like this, you see in this little picture here, um, the heart has a region that is dyed uh, in this spot right here there has been some sort of obstruction. In this case, they're calling it a blood clot. It could be a piece of plaque, it could be something, and we are blocking what we call a coronary artery. This is what we need to do things like angioplasties to prevent this from happening, or a bypass where we can find these obstructions and divert the blood around it. In this situation, this person is suffering a heart attack, and this region of this cardiac muscle isn't getting any blood, so no oxygen, which means the muscle is dying. It's gonna be damaged. Well, the problem is after the heart attack is fixed, why is it that you can't just fix this blood vessel and have the person have a healthy heart again? Well, now there's a whole region of the heart that is now dead, and it doesn't conduct electricity like muscle does. It doesn't have contractility like muscle does. It doesn't extend, it doesn't stretch, and it doesn't snap back in place. So you have a heart that doesn't function like it should. So this fibrosis thing is kind of a scary situation to have, um, and it's kind of permanent damage. That's why heart attacks are not good. Um, and we use EKGs. We'll learn more about that, how uh, we can monitor your heart's electrical activity and figure out if you've had heart attacks and where the injury is at. All right. So let's take a look at some review questions here. All right. Real quickly, you can write these questions on the uh, left-hand side of your notebook. Uh, there's t I'll give you two questions for your Cornell notes. So first question, why can't bodybuilders increase the number of muscle fibers? Okay. Why can't bodybuilders increase the number of muscle fibers? All right, well, the answer to that is muscle fibers are multinucleated and cannot undergo mitosis. Okay, so that just, we talked about that earlier. You cannot have mitosis happen when you have 46,000 nuclei. Second question is, what has happened to your muscles over the past five years? You are stronger now than you were when you were 10. So what happened? The answer to that question is that muscle fibers have become larger and because of more filaments, more myofibrils, or what we call hypertrophy, like that.